Hi guys, welcome to another episode of What Stock, where I tell you what stock I'm buying next and why. I have a tendency to buy in what I call cycles. Last month I was buying nothing but stock in the industrial space. This month I can't stop finding deals in the healthcare space. Hence my last stock pick was on Supernus. It just so happens that when I find a great company that's trading at a very, very, very low price, there are other deals of similar companies that I pick up as well. At the beginning of lockdown, when the narrative was very much, we'll be working from home forever. People were moving their money into companies that connected us from home and weren't necessarily buying up companies in commercial real estate. This is where I found a lot of great deals. And it's also where I found some very short-term significant gains, particularly in companies like CBRE Group, when the narrative quickly shifted to everything's opening back up again. There's another very strong narrative happening right now. And that narrative is we are close to a vaccine. And that's a narrative that I wholeheartedly want to believe. And I pray is true for the millions of us affected today. But as a byproduct of every strong narrative, you're gonna see some significant moves in the market. Hundreds of thousands of people have rebalanced their exposure to the biotech industry and moved away from great biotech companies that aren't working on a vaccine and put them into companies that are working on a vaccine or have had some great PR around it. This is in an attempt to get great short-term gains. It means that the great biotech companies that aren't currently working on a flavor of the month product are selling at a significant discount and they're there for me to swoop up. When we develop one or more vaccines for what's currently happening in the world, investors will reevaluate that portfolio exposure and they will come back to those biotech companies that have great fundamentals, a great product offering, a strong pipeline and a really healthy shelf life. Today we're going to look at Alexion. They're an S&P 500 biotech big pharma company. They market four products that target rare diseases. Ultamiris and Soliris are the two products approved to target PNH and AHUS. Strenzik is currently the only product approved to target HPP. Kanuma is currently the only product approved to target LALD. There is very little direct competition in this space. So instead of Alexian having to defend its profits, it can focus a lot of its time innovating its future pipeline. But what's the market opportunity? Well, the global PNH and AHAS market is expected to grow at a rate of 6.1% year on year, every single year for the next five years. Now, before you get too excited, and believe me, there's no reason whatsoever to get excited at those statistics. It's a lot safer and smarter to invest your money in slow to no growth sectors rather than sectors that are expecting exponential growth. And there's only one reason for that. Sectors that are expected to explode attract a lot more competition and each new player can be more disruptive than the last. In a biotech sphere, specifically focusing on a niche like PNH and AHUS, where Alexion enjoys product exclusivity, we don't expect any competition. So let's take a quick snapshot at Alexion's market price and some of the associated statistics right now. At the recording of this video, Alexion is trading at $113.61. They have a trailing PE of $10.59, giving them a PE ratio of 10.73. They have a price to book ratio of 2.14 and expected future earnings growth rates for 7.1% and just over 12.1% year on year for the next five years. Now, at face value, these statistics aren't jumping out at me, but we need to compare the price against how other biotech companies are trading today. And we also need to get an idea of the future discounts of future earnings cash flows to see if actually it's a really strong investment. The two most important growth rates I look at are its earnings per share growth rate and its book value per share growth rate. Alexion, over the past five years, 
has grown its earnings per share by a whopping 26.4% year on year. It's grown its book value by just under 25% year on year for the past five years. Now let's factor in the supporting growth rates, sales and free cash flow. Alexion have been growing their sales by just under 18% year on year for the past five years. Now get this, they've been growing their free cash flow by just over 40% year on year for the past five years. In short, these guys are growing their top line, their bottom line, their equity, and the amount of extra earnings I can hypothetically pocket as an investor every single year. And that gets me kind of excited. I also want to point out that the free cash flow growth rate, the number that most of us investors really pay particular attention to, has grown significantly more than the closest direct competition Alexion has. Let's look at the financial performance. And financial performance is really a proxy for how well the executive leadership team, the CEO, the CFO, the CTO, the COO, are managing the company's ca capital. Alexion have seen a return on invested capital of 16.9%. They've seen a return on equity of 21.8%. And they've seen a return on assets of 14.6%. All of these statistics look really good and all of them are kind of equal to or greater than uh, the 15% minimum acceptable rate of return that I look for when I make an investment. So as I like to say, that's a management team that I want to invest in. It's also worth pointing out that the most important statistic of the three, the return on invested capital, which factors in debt, is greater than Alexion's immediate competition. These guys are starting to look more and more like a great company. Now, we've got to talk about the financial health. <sighs> Gearing ratios are the least sexy statistic you want to look at, but in times of economic uncertainty, they become one of the most important. Let me give you an example. You don't go shopping for a Ferrari based on the fact it has airbags, seat belts and a braking system that works, but you would not buy that Ferrari unless it had an airbag, a seat belt and a braking system that works, unless you're mad. Alexion have a debt to equity of 0.21. They have a current ratio of 4.3. They have a quick ratio of 3.8. Now let me give you an idea of why that looks very good. A quick ratio, so the amount of assets it owns that are very highly liquid of 3.8 tells me that Alexion has the ability or the spending power to pay off its short-term liabilities for the next 3.8 years. These guys are very well balanced. They are very well positioned to see this economic downturn through. Now let's look at some of the really exciting stuff, those sweet profit margins. Now it's hard not to get excited about the ginormous profit margins offered to us investors inside the world of Big Pharma. The argument here is they spend so much money during those initial phases of getting a product to market and they assume a huge amount of risk not getting it approved by the FDA that they offset some of those early challenges by selling their product at a huge inflated price. Now I'll leave it up to the court of public opinion as to whether or not it's the right or wrong thing to do, but objectively speaking, large profit margins are good for investors. Alexion have a gross profit margin of 92.1%. That's almost pure profit. They have an operating margin of 42.4%. They have a net profit margin of 44.8%. In short, the greater the percentage of the sales revenue that can be reinvested back into the growth of the company is great. One of the huge benefits of having those big juicy profit margins is there's less stress on the company to sell in volume and they can reinvest a greater portion of that sales revenue back into the growth of the company. Let's talk about my return on investment if I was to buy Alexion 
today. Currently, Alexion is trading with an earnings yield of 9.31. They have a potential upside of just over 20%. This 20% beats my minimum acceptable rate of return of 15%. It scores a peg of 0.85, and I get a discount of 13.62% of the future earnings of Alexion if I also factor in that 15% rate of return that I'm looking for. In short, Alexion's looking like a really good deal. But before we get too excited, we do need to compare the price to other biotech companies trading with a similar market cap, doing a similar thing. It might be the case that all of them are on sale, in which case Alexion might be the best of the bunch. But before we get too excited, we need to compare those discount rates against all of the biotech companies trading with a similar market cap, doing a similar thing. Because it might be the case that as great of a deal as Alexion seems, all of these companies are on sale right now. In which case I might need to reevaluate whether or not Alexion is the best buy to make. At the time of this recording, SPY, which is a proxy for the S&P 500, is trading with a PE ratio of 21.75. And the healthcare sector as a whole is trading with a PE ratio of 24. Alexion's PE ratio undercuts both of these PE ratios by greater than 50%. Now let's look at the price to book ratio and see where Alexion stacks up. At the time of this recording, SPY is trading with a PB ratio of 3.29. The healthcare sector is trading with a PB ratio of 3.86. Alexion undercuts both of these by 34 and 44% respectively. So to summarize all of this, Alexion is supremely cheap versus its growth expectations and what the rest of the market, specifically its sector, are doing. But as always, don't take my word for it, Let's see what the insiders are doing. When we look at the past six months of insider buying activity, we can see that over 90% of the shares transacted by insiders were purchased. We can also see that over 60% of those transactions were buy transactions, which tells me the insiders are really bullish about this stock. So let's summarize all of these numbers real quickly. The growth numbers are good. The financial performance is good. The financial health is good. The margins are good. The price is good. Where it sits alongside its competitors are good. It doesn't even really have any competitors. And I'm buying it when it's massively on sale. Guys, thanks for watching my channel. This is my third video and I'm really enjoying it. If you like the video, give it a like. If you like the content that I'm creating, uh, please subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, feedback, or comments, uh, just leave them below. Thanks again for watching. Hematology and me me metabolism. <laughs> metabolism and hematology. <laughs> right, let's try again.